die if they want to. Then I take the first thing out and I go, okay, where'd you get that at? Mm -hmm. What happens to the rest? <laughs> and they go, well, I don't know exactly. See? In other words, this. We need to know what we're talking about. Yeah. We can't be like those pull strings. Somebody pulls our string and recites what we were told. That's no good. It must come from our Father. Yeah. And it does come from our Father. Look at that book of stuff he shared with us. So much to share, anyway. So, as I was there, and I helped them do this, and all these things occurred, and, and helping them, the lady still couldn't conceive it. She was still kind of questionable about me. Why is this guy helping us? Why? Well, see, the scripture I use when that happens is this. Whoever compels you to go one mile, go with them too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. See, I go ten. <laughs> yeah. God never ever said, oh, you're doing a little too much good, Charles. Cut it out. <laughs> never did he ever tell me that. Because I'll say it like Paul said it. I labor more than them all. Yes. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. <laughs> Meaning I don't use grace as just a feeling. I don't use it as just a word. I know the grace that God gives us allows us to do exploits. Allows us to do things in His name. That no one can understand. Well, that's all right. Because I don't want you to understand it. Because they understand you. It reaches you. Yes. It touches you. It does something inside you. The Word of God is what does that. Okay, now watch. So he tells him to go out. The man flees in here. Now you notice something here. He is a man of God. There's no question about that. He is a man of God. But he doesn't have a full understanding. Because feelings hurt. That's what I mean by it. His emotions took control of his understanding. Meaning, he already knew you can't hide from God. Why do you think he went way down in the boat? <laughs> no one will see me down here. <laughs> no one will know. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's been many times, this was years ago, years and years ago. My sister can, can witness to that some of it. Man, I fought God tooth and nail. I ain't doing it. Someone tells me, someone wants me to share, isn't that popular? I'll tell you that right now. It isn't. Because you got to look people face to face, eye to eye, and think the things they're not going to like. Just like Jesus, when he called the Pharisees and the Sadducees, generation of vipers, like John did. They didn't like that. Why are you talking like that to us for? Well, because you got two languages. You say one thing, and you do another. And you're sneaky. You see? So, so basically, that kind of sharing, I didn't want to do it. So I ran. And I ran. And I ran. And every single time, he has pulled me out and established me. Every single time. Okay, now watch this. Jonah running away. Jonah going away. See, that's all right. God wanted that to happen. I'm telling you, that's what he wanted to happen. That's what God... See, God is in control of everything. There's nothing that goes on that... Now, I know I don't, because most of What about when someone dies? What about when that happens? What about... And they have all these questions. Your first mistake is asking a man about those things and not asking God that knows everything. Really, that's your first mistake. Because if you go ask a man, he's going to tell you what he learned. And then he got it from that other guy. Who got it from that other guy? Who got it from that other guy back in 1734? Instead of saying, wait a minute, let me not go do a history quiz here. Let me get on my knees and ask my father what he says about it. Because I'm going to show See, death isn't that scary. It isn't. It really isn't. See, because I'm dead to the old man. Mm -hmm. And now, see, that's a good death. Yeah. Is that what I'm That's a good death. When I don't follow myself, and I don't go to my own ambition, and I don't do my own thing, that's a good death. You see? Okay, now watch. Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind unto the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Meaning this, a lot of times in our lives, when we go through situations, something moves us to shake us up a little. Really a lot. A devastating occurrence, if you will, to wake us up. Something that happens that just, uh, when I was 18, I was in a car accident, uh, lost sight in my right eye, that's why it looks funny, and it looks a little ways different. At 18, my wife and my sister heard about that, they thought I was dead. No. The police came to her house, my mom's house, and said, your brother's dead. And they were shocked.
child. A lot of people where I lived, grew up in Wapato, Washington. They thought when they see me walking down the street, like, oh my God, are you a ghost? <laughs> what happened? You know? they, they heard that's how bad the accident was. Just to give you an example, the brain swelled up. It was pushing against my skull. The brain was bruised. They were going to cut and my head off to let it swell back down. I mean, they could do it different now. But, cool. but back then, it was the high tech that they had. And they said, yeah, it's over for him. Told me that. They wanted me to sign a paper to say it and cut top of my head off and you know, this part. I said, I ain't signing, I ain't, I ain't signing that. No way. Thank God that when I was a kid there was a Bible in Because I knew. And I, and I don't care, I don't care what dark hole we go into, if this had an influence in our life when we were little, it'll stay with us. Because we knew we know who to call on in that dark time. <laughs> Come on! I don't care how disobedient we are or how much we shake our fist, that word just echoes in our heart. <laughs> That's what I did. I said, he can heal me. And I know it. Well, you don't see no scar, so they didn't cut. And my brain went back down and the bruise, they don't know how. 20 minutes later, they went and did another x-ray and the brain was down, there was no bruise and they don't know how. And they told my dad, that's a miracle kid right there. We don't know how that happened. His brain was pushing against, see? That kind of occurrence would make you think I would straighten up, right? Uh -uh. Still messed up. <laughs> Still being disobedient, shaking my fist. See, because something this pure, come on, something this sure, something this true, it's foreign to what I learned. See, I've heard many promises and then seen them broke. I've seen a lot of things and then I've seen them fall apart. But this right here, this promise that God gives us is true and solid, and that's kind of hard to take sometimes because it's in its pure form. That's right. And we can't water it down. See, what I mean by that, I remember one time this, this minister lady, this was years ago, she said, Charles, when you share with people, you really need to tone it down because they can't get it. That's when I learned the scripture when Jesus said to the people that didn't know anything, Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Boy, that's a hard thing to say to people, but he still said it. People say, well, that's Jesus. Jesus, yes. But whose word is this and who is inside of us? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Meaning this, it is going to get in our heart and it is going to bring about change and it is going to deliver us and it is going to give us freedom and it is going to make us whole and it is cleaning us. Yeah. Right. That's just the way it is. Because that's how powerful God's word is. Okay. So now Jonah goes and the tempest comes, the storm comes. So when a storm comes, it attacks you. Okay? That's the time you take a breather. Don't go, oh, take it away! Don't you want to learn something? That's the best time to learn, you know. I remember, what's this now? When the disciples were in the boat with Jesus, right? And the boat started rocking. Save us, we perish. Hello, raised from the dead. Hello, God. <laughs> Go ahead and I feed that. <laughs> Come on. They're running around afraid from the storm, right? Let me show you what really happened spiritually. The wind and the sea were praising their God. They were, they were glad their maker was riding on them. They were excited to see their maker. It's man that didn't understand that. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> see? So when those things happen, it's, it's time to settle down. Take a breather. Stop for a moment. Don't let your mind run and say, oh, this might happen or that might happen. Relax for a moment. Take a breather. As, as, as Pastor shared this morning, rest. What does that mean? What are you waiting for? Well, I don't see nothing happening good. That means I'm not getting in the way anymore. 